Hello friends, Susan Axelrod here, the Confidence Coach, bringing you another episode of my podcast, your book, My Time. I love this podcast where I interview uh, independent authors, mostly women who have self-published books, with material that has just come up out of them. Today, the tables are going to be turned again. I am going to be interviewed by my dear friend and colleague, Nadine Searle, the Calmer Self Coach. Hello, Nadine. Hello, Susan. I'm so pleased to be doing this with you today. Wonderful. Uh I have five books published. And um, one day, Nadine said to me, why don't I interview you on your book show about your books? And I thought to myself, okay. And so we have slowly been uh, having these discussions about my books. Today, we are going to be talking about two of my books. This one came out of me a few years ago, Dear Younger Self. This book gives you permission and impetus to seek out the younger soul self in you and have a conversation with her or him. Dear younger self, I got you. This book is so good. I can't wait to discuss it with Nadine. And this book, Dear Future Self, is so good. I love this book. It's so good. I created a podcast to go along with it, my Dear Future Self podcast. In this book, you get to speak to your future self in a way that is loving, supportive, and so amazing when you get this thesis. I can't wait to talk about it. So Nadine, I will stop here and give the show over to you with my gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. I am so honored and so pleased to be doing this with you today. Like you say, we have talked about some of your other books and you just keep writing don't you because it like you say it comes up naturally from you doesn't it and this is so wonderful um and it's just good to share isn't it I know your aim for this podcast series is for you to actually give people the voice to tell people what your writing is about and how they can use your books to help themselves and this is so wonderful it's a wonderful platform and I just love that I get to ask you questions about it so it is it is so good and you're absolutely right you know these books are to inspire to support to help people um, in whichever way we can use them in whatever way we like can't we it is for ourselves isn't it like you say dear younger self dear future self so we are talking to ourselves to help understand ourselves, where we've been in the past, and to help us create our future, isn't it? So I love that. We're sitting right in the middle of that at the moment. It's perfect. But it is wonderful as well that you can apply these books to any part of your life, can't you? Um, it is, you know, the reflection of looking back at your younger self. We have done, you sponsored a wonderful Inner Child podcast that we did with wonderful Cornelia Stephanie. Um, that was a lot of reflecting, wasn't it? And that's a way that we can look back at where we've come from. Um, but this lovely idea of talking to yourself, some people might find that a bit strange, but we do it all the time, don't we? We are talking to ourselves. Yes. In a, maybe of meditation. One of your books that I've, again, had the honour of talking to you about was your Meditations to Ease, Calm and Inspire. And that is partly what we're talking about doing here, isn't it? I think especially with the younger self. Would you agree that that's the one way we can do this? Yes, absolutely. And I'm glad you brought up that podcast series that you did. I don't know how many episodes uh, you did, so many dozens in the yeah, end, uh, yeah. which all started with one conversation between you and uh, Cornelia Stephanie. And it really is emblematic of this idea that you can get started 
speaking to your younger self. I love that point that you just made up. There's that younger self and that younger self and that younger self, you know, like the, the younger self is infinite. And the podcast series that went on and on, eventually you brought in guests of whom I was one and, and, and really um, did some deep diving in this area. Uh, speaking to yourself, this other point you made up of how much we have learned and grown uh, to speak to ourselves. Now, when I use the word self, Nadine, uh, it always has in my mind the capital S. So when I even write the word yourself, usually I write Y-O-U-R space capital S-E-L-F or myself the same way. Mm-hmm. And I cannot say how much my life has changed since I no longer felt that it was egotistical or arrogant or conceited to speak to myself. Quite frankly, no one is going to be able to take care of your younger self as well as you are and the same with future self yeah 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 i so love that it's so important isn't it i think for people to get that message what you've just said about self with a capital s and that self-care it's one of those things i know with your work with the clients that you work with and i do myself people struggle with that don't they this self-care looking after yourself looking after number one um And it is so important, isn't it, to understand yourself and how we can look back at our younger self and learn from ourself and heal ourself and nurture ourself at whatever stage of life. Obviously, we're in the here and now. And I know people can understand that. What can we do for ourselves now? But there is so much value and benefit to looking back and healing old wounds and learning. I personally, in my own personal inner child work, I've learned from little Nadine. I've learned a lot. Who knew? I didn't know that was going to be a thing, but it was. Yes. That's that's there. And again, in turn, looking to your future self, you know, who I'm going to be, who I'm going to change into, transform into. I can learn from that as well. And I can take, I'm going to say a big word now because it's big in our lives, confidence. I can get confidence from that. You as the wonderful confidence coach, you you inspire confidence in everybody. You give it to people. You give people permission to have that confidence, myself included. And I'm very grateful for that. But how much we can get from looking at ourselves at different times in our lives. You know, you you said something I, I really want to address. You used the word number one in in your conversation. You said looking out for number one. There's there's a sort of attitude out there that looking out for number one is selfish. And I lived with that for all the years that that was imposed societally, culturally, in the family systems, especially in partner relationships. But the truth is, if we don't go to ground zero with the self, number one, then the all this stuff is seeping off us. It's, you know, energetically seeping off us and all the stuff of life and trauma uh, that younger selves are faced with stays in us, what I call under the surface. Uh, this is a thesis that I've been developing from my own work, my own uh, very deep, vulnerable look at younger selves, at uh, relationships, and but mostly at myself. And and this is really important. Now, um, Dr. Andrew Huberman is a neuroscientist I follow and learn from, and recently I was stunned, stunned when I heard him say, I cannot think of any single thing more important that a human can do than self-care. You know, he he's into physical health, mental health, emotional health, uh, the physiology, the science, the biomes, the biology. And I, I stopped in my tracks. Usually I'm listening to podcasts when I'm walking. I stopped in my tracks and I said, holy moly, did he just say that? 
And here we are, the nature of your work, the calmer self-coach, where you actually have a system devised to calm your inner self, or me, the confidence coach. I appreciate so much what you said, uh, because the confidence comes from soul connection. The soul is the self. So yes. um, this conversation is so good. I, as always, Nadine, I want to invite our listeners to listen to this again, yeah. open up and integrate what we're saying about the younger self thesis. Mm, definitely. And we, we always do that, don't we? I always re-listen to things. I, I do things in bite-sized pieces and, you know, and that works for me. And I know that your books, the way that you write them, they are small, just for people that haven't seen them in real life. So they know they are small. They are there to be used that way, aren't they? Yeah. And I and I loved that because that's the way I, I dip into books. I very rarely start at the beginning and end. I dip in and out. And we can do that with your books, can't we? And And you do also have space for us to put our own bits in don't you which is lovely so they're not just books to read they're books to use and yes. they, are, they are so valuable in the point that actually they are a little a little book that a little um guide journal. if you like almost yeah yeah well of course we can journal yes and that's so beneficial but I, I do see it as a little guide because you can do when you need something you can go oh I need that bit I need that bit and you can dip in and out it's not a big project because I, I personally can't do big projects. I need that dipping in and dipping out when I feel inspired. And you do inspire, don't you? I think your little tagline on your um, Dear Younger Self is an anthology to inspire self-reflection. And it does inspire you to do that, doesn't it? So that you'll go, oh, actually, I will do that. Something that you've talked about in the book. I go, I'll do that today. And that's what we need sometimes, isn't it? Giving you permission to do something maybe that you haven't done before, but the inspiration to go, I'm going to give that a go, you know, and it is something we talk about within maybe meditation or within, like you say, walking in nature, how we can use those times. You know, you don't have to be sitting still and quiet. You can be walking, you can be doing something, but, and you call it, I think, correct me if I've got the term wrong, conscious awareness, is it being conscious Exactly. Um, yeah. You know, it's coming up a lot for me in this conversation with you, Nadine, that the the rise that each of us has had in life and business, in spite of uh, very, very deep personal difficulties that we've also had, like any human has at our life stage, um, really comes from coming into the conscious awareness stage. And especially we have been tasked divinely with being vulnerable. And so I know people say it to you all the time. People say it to me all the time. Wow, you talked about that. You know, thank you for voicing what I've never told anyone. I'm not just talking about in my deep coaching sessions, but I'm talking even about on social media or personal engagement with people, strangers I meet. I don't apologize for going deep anymore. Do you have to be so deep all the time? Yes, I do. Yes, I do have to be so deep all the time. I don't apologize for it anymore, especially when I'm talking with young professionals. Recently, um, I was having a conversation. Well, I've had conversations with many professionals and a couple of my uh, clients have told me, uh, one of them, a, a young, a 35 year old man just said, you, you help me with zero fear. Because if you're not worried about getting things wrong all the time, then you can be more confident and be like, oh, how do I get this right? And other people say, um, you talk about things nobody else talks about. And this is such important healing for your younger self. Um, it, it's a segue into the Dear Future Self thesis as well. In my coaching work with clients, this is kind of uh, you know, a program, it's a thesis uh, of my work that I work in all the time that starts with what you brought up just now, which is being aware of the self. What self? The capital S, self, because in the end, that's in my control. That's yeah. in my control. That's in my control. Yeah. And so the segue to the future self, you know, we're talking about the younger self. We're talking about looking vulnerably, opening yourself, healing. 
And the segue crossing the bridge to the future self is activating. It's activating, dear future self. I'm doing this now for you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine mm-hmm. if you could like be with your future self and be like yesterday at 4 p.m. True story. I had already had a full day but I had no plans, no one to be with, nowhere to be. And so at 4 p.m., instead of plopping down on the couch to watch TV or even read a book for six hours, which is not my thing, but some people might do that, um, I got Mr. Cooper in the car. We went, we climbed a, a small mountain and sat. We didn't go all the way to the top like we usually do. We went two thirds up and I sat there in nature, looking out at the view from the mountain. And with inside of one hour, I was still back by 5 p.m. But I knew for my future self, it would be better for her to have that compelling impetus to do that for a few more minutes that day. Do you know what I mean? Totally. And I love it. I so love that you, again, you're giving people permission to do that and to just think about it. You know, this is that you've said it to me personally, and it's so helpful to go, you know, whatever you're feeling like at the moment, what can you do now that will help support your future self? And when you actually frame it that way, God, it gives you so much power to go, actually, I can do one little thing right here, right now that will support my future self or my future self will be grateful for whatever way you want to look at it and it does give you a bit of motivation doesn't it to do something but it also makes you feel valuable and it does make you actually step into the moment so so it's really it's a little bit contradictory maybe but hopefully people will understand you know you can look back and reflect at your younger self you can be in the present moment, which we all know is so valuable, mindfulness, the whole essence of mindfulness, but you can also be then preparing for your future self. Does that make you know, sense? Can I say that in the yeah, way? you know, um, the progression is amazing. And I want to be very clear. You, you're apologizing or equivocating a little bit like, well, I know we're supposed to be present. And you're saying, well, you can look back, you can be present, you can. So let's be very clear. This is, I'm like sitting forward. I'm like, let's be very clear. Listen Uh up, people. Uh The real truth, if you're in your honest self, there's no one else to be honest with but yourself. And that's the hardest. If you're in your self-truth, you are not actually being mindfully present unless or until you do some of this beautiful, you know, digging to the past and really seeing and understanding and learning where she's been and, you know, seeing what was imposed upon her, seeing the ocean she swam in, what were the thoughts, what were the societal implications, what were the cultural and familial expectations, you know, that's all in there. It's all in there under the surface of your life that you're living in the what present moment, you know, mindfully present. If you can mindfully clear, if you can really clear and get into this quiet, mindful space, not that meditation has to be quiet. It doesn't at all. There's different types of meditation, not just clearing. Um, then that's great. But the real truth is still in all, most of us are not able to do that. And it takes tending to constantly. So that's why the Dear Younger Self thesis is important. By the way, thank you so much for describing my books in the way that you did. They are tools to use. Every chapter is about 500 words. Uh, The book itself is small. It's one or two pages with that usually has questions embedded into the writing, followed by a reflections page or a contemplations page um, where, like you said, you can write your own thoughts. And all five books in the series have that same model because of the same thing for me. I need to work, think, work, think, work, think. And each one is in isolation. Uh, The chapters are not in a a progression per se where you have to read that one in order to get that one. So um, let me uh, come back again and say, when you're saying, you know, I hope people get this 
And that is, you know, there's the dear younger self and we're kind of in quotation marks supposed to be present, right? And then, but the other side, I already talked about the truth is there's a lot of stuff under the surface that's impacting our present self. And now we go to the future, the dear future self. Oh, you're not supposed to go to the future. You're supposed to be here. Really? That's so bogus. That's just not real. Because why? I'm worried about every freaking thing in the future. I'm worried about myself, my children, my family, my parents, my work, my, you know, the, the globe, you know, like I'm worried about things. You know, you, it's hard to not be worried about things uh, it, it, that, you know, are in the future, mm-hmm. especially when you feel so out of your control. So uh, then again, it's hard to come from all that to come to this middle space of, um, as my one of my mentors, Dr. Roger Yanka calls it, presencing, which I love, presencing. And so the ability um, on the journey of what we're talking about of being able to be mindfully present does take clearing some stuff in the past and really not uh, attaching to future outcomes that you have no idea. Just in the green room when you and I were talking, I just said this to you off camera, uh, Nadine, I just said to you, um, with your experience of having breast cancer as you've shared with the world um, and all you're experiencing through it, uh, you have no idea what what's going to come out of this for you and the impact yeah. that you're going to be able to make from the yeah. lessons and themes and and everything. And that's your conversation with your d- dear future self. Dear future yeah. self, this yeah. shit is going on in my life, but yeah. I'm in awareness of it that's and true. I got you because we're gonna really help others from this or something like that. So do you see what I'm saying like about the mindful presence? I do, and I've just got to take the moment to really honor you, Susan Axelrod, the person that you are. You mentioned it a little bit earlier, I think you said one of your clients said you call it out, you know, you put it out there. This is what you do and you've just done exactly that. You've demonstrated it beautifully that actually you're not afraid to say what other people might not want to say. You call things what they are, you state it, you put it out there. And I've said it to you before, don't ever change. You know, this is you and it's so beautiful. And sometimes you do, you dig, you poke, you really call it out, don't you? And sometimes it can be a little bit uncomfortable. I'm speaking from personal experience because sometimes you do poke, poke, poke. And I go, come on, Susan. But this is why we love you. And this is why you are so valuable because you will do this. And these books that you are writing you know that's such a flowing out of you because they're so important every one of them gives people this permission this wonderful insight into their conscious awareness and how they can be as you've just as I say so beautifully described be in the present moment be looking at our younger self and creating our future self it can all be together and and who says that like it is? Not many people do. And you've just done it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank this you. is what you do. You know, you work with people in business. I think it is mostly women, isn't it, in your intuitive business system. You've supported me so much in this personally and in business. And, you know, if you, I just encourage everybody to look up personally all of your podcasts, all of your books, all of your work, because this is what you do and this is what you give people and it's wonderful you yeah. know you've said earlier you've got a dear future self podcast look that up it's brilliant you know but your books and and working with you personally you know this is what you give people isn't it and we need it we need to look at ourselves. we need to be selfish this is what it's all about isn't it and we need to have that conscious awareness so that we can be who we are meant to be and you say it all the time to me, don't you? You show up, you show up. You know, I, I needed permission and encouragement and motivation to show up. And, and like you've just referred to my recent diagnosis, you know, this has been going on about a year now. I didn't want to show up. I didn't want to share, did I? But you helped me to do that. You encouraged me and supported me. And again, I'm so grateful because this is helping me. It's good for everybody else as well. So it's big. Isn't well, it? because and- you showed up, you broke through your fears, right? Okay. The the vulnerable younger self who was afraid of cancer and chemo, yeah. as we've discussed yeah. on other podcast episodes. Yeah. And uh, the scary, that's my point, the scary future yeah. self, am I gonna be alive? 
Mm. You know, mm. Wh- if I'm alive, what am I going to look like? If I'm, yes. if I look okay, what, you know, what's my experience going to be the real truth, mm. uh, as you, as you have shared. And that's my point is as you've shown up, you have put out so much to help others. I, and, and for me, God forbid, you know, the next person in my life, uh, who is going to get diagnosed, God forbid, you don't even want to say those words, but here you are living proof. Gonna happen. Yeah. It's going to yeah. happen. Um, I've learned so much from you and that's really it. You know, this word selfish is, you know, where did it even come from? I'm not the first person to, you know, I saw it somewhere else. All of my work is based on my reflections, my work, my commitment, learning from others, and then having it come through me, extrapolating, learning from you, having it come through me, voicing it out. It's more like S-E-L-F hyphen I-S-H, H, self ish you know mm-hmm. and and so if you can't you know if you're the parents with three or four young children even two young children two careers dog house etc it's hard to be focusing on the self and um yet here we are saying uh, do the best you can if you understand uh the lessons underneath the strategies that we're talking about uh you can do it when you're 30 seconds in the bathroom i call this bathroom yeah. meditation and um yes. so uh also i sub- submit another thing that i do which thank you for get constantly giving permission for me to be in myself with my style yes. you know when one of my any client and i actually also have several men clients now who are finding me wanting to do the soul work when i say to my clients really you know how much time do you spend scrolling or playing on a game now don't Mm -hmm. don't really tell me you don't have time you know and and there's only one client i actually have one client who doesn't have a smartphone because she has high anxiety and she acknowledges i would be in addiction to the phone and so um but most other people in the world there's time if you stop doing something else that is actually damaging you And so, um, yeah, this is so fun, Nadine, so much to talk about, about this, you know, the progression of this thesis, Mm -hmm. uh, showing up vulnerably, digging vulnerably, looking forth bravely. Um, One more thing, you just used the word, the phrase creating your life. So Nadine, I've been on the inspiration journey for decades, really three decades, and looking for other people to inspire listening to so many people learning you know countless hours in those days it was audio tapes and cds and um now streaming podcasts of course listening to others you know now i'm in a mature state of being asking questions of myself and um you know the the real the real question is what if we don't do this you know, what if we don't do this? People used to say, create your life, design your life. And I'd be like, what does that even mean? Like, I, I literally, honestly, I, I couldn't uh, comprehend. I was in relationship when you are in relationship, connected to someone else. It's not all about you. It's yeah, like, no. you know, you have to figure all that out. How does that go? How does that work? Mm-hmm. And this dear younger self to dear future self thesis is the uh, essence, uh, it's the emanation point of creating the life that you want. And you're not tied or connected to the partner no matter what. When you uh, give permission to speak to yourself, to see your younger self, the trauma and difficulties she or he experienced just by virtue of being a breathing human child in the world, and then you give permission to you know your a nod to your future self and say i'm i'm learning i'm 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 working i'm breaking through excavating yes. down mm-hmm. that is the way that you design your life now you nadine got hit with a cancer diagnosis what are you supposed to freaking do with that right you know work work you know, self permission to self love, self care, rest, like we talked about, and so on. And then when you're ready and able in the few moments when your mind can be in a place that's not consumed, right, with the fear and anxiety and worries and pain that comes from cancer, you can open up like a little glimpse and be like, 
you know, what could come from this. And sometimes, you know, that's all there is and that's good enough. This is so fun, Nadine. I love our conversations. Isn't Thank it? you. Isn't it? We have so much that we can say. But I think you've just, you know, you put it together so beautifully. And I just want to reiterate that it is about, you know, we deserve it. We, we deserve it. We owe it to ourselves to be self-centered. We need to look at ourselves first. Our younger self, like you've said a few times, I think, on this chat with it with, we're having that you know this is where we came from this is why we do what we do we owe it to ourselves and others to understand that and this is learning isn't it this is what's so valuable and we can do that by using the tools of your books and working with you and then looking at ourselves constantly being selfish self-care looking after ourselves doing what's best for us and then creating our future. And that has the ripple effect because then we're helping other people with their future too, aren't we? So that's beautifully connected and it's wonderful. And I know that you've said to me, and I want to share this with everyone because it really has helped me, that actually when you're looking at your future self, and I think you can refer to your younger self, it can be, you can talk to yourself in the next hour. You know, what do I want to be in the next hour? How do I want to be? Does that mean I need to rest? Me personally, lately, that's been something I've done. Does it mean I need to do a bit of work? Like you talked about going out for a walk or something. You know, I, I can put that in and we can all do this. It doesn't have to be this massive. Yes, I love it can that. Be one minute, one week, one year, one hour, one month. It can be anything. That really helped me understand that actually, what can I do now? For my future self what can I delve into for my younger self that will help me now taking you out like you say that fear that panic that anxiety that exhaustion whatever we're going through we can flick about that's probably not the right term but you know mm. what I mean flip in and out of those things and I so I have really put that into practice since you helped me understand that um, that I can actually go okay I'll do just for one minute what can I do what do I want in my next minute what do I want next week what can I do now so that's a really point I want everyone to really get and your books help with that definitely but can I ask you and it, maybe this will round this off quite beautifully because much as we'd like to talk to whoever we can't um how do you do this daily what what do you what do you do maybe do you have an example of something of how you I've yes. just done it in a minute yes. or a week or whatever how I can mean you <clears throat> Thank you for asking because, you know, the, in the world of media that I entered uh, in full over the last decade, uh, creating my own, uh, you know, output like this, I've learned how much uh, fabrication can happen. I, I didn't, you know, really tune in to, you know, airbrushed model bodies in magazines and and I had no idea how much things could be, be fabricated. So the reason that I show up live, uh, I do my live videos and I speak uh, directly and, and, you know, the, as you know, people can see this, this is not scripted. Like I, I don't have notes and, you know, you may no. be writing notes, but you know, um, is I, I do this. And so how do I do it is I have worked for decades really to clear these things that we're talking about, to, to clear things that happened under the surface before my own childhood. Not, thank God, I was lucky and blessed to have a wonderful family, not because, you know, of horrible trauma growing up, not that doesn't happen to be my story, but the truth is every child, you know, there's difficulty. So to clear whatever I can, to be able to have a deep breath, to be more connected to my physical body, to be um, ultimately in charge of my thoughts. Uh, the, my journey all started uh, d decades ago when I learned that thoughts were things. And um, regarding Dear Future Self, that was a true story yesterday. That, that was a true story. I got back here at 4 p.m. I asked myself, how will I, I didn't have plans. I was on my own and I asked myself, how will I feel if I get inert on the couch now? I don't, don't, I'm in a place that's not my home, so I don't happen to have a hobby thing or, you know, whatever, or anything here. How will I feel if I get on the couch now and go all those hours versus can I take the dog out and do that thing, which I knew wasn't going to be several hours? And how will I feel? if I do that. So to the point that you're making that yeah. we've discussed 
It could be a minute when you have cancer. It is one minute ahead. Or if you, you know, have other things going on in your life to think about the next decade, uh, you know, that's me now. I'm, I'm so ingrained in this. I turned, I'm turning 62 this year. I'm already into the next decade of my life. And so I'm looking at 70, like, what's my impact going to be? What will I have accomplished in this decade? But frankly, in my bad moments, I go one hour at a time or one small bit at a time. That's how I do it. I am the living, breathing thesis of these things. And to be in that conscious awareness, which is the first phase of my confident life methodology, come to conscious awareness. Uh, the second phase is clarity. I asked myself, you know, how will I feel? Then I got clear. I'm going to feel crappy. I'm not going to feel good if I, you know, start this now. There's still a lot of time even when I get back. And so then I acknowledged that. And then I felt that my third phase is confidence. Like, you know what? I'm going to put them on the leash. We're going to go do that climb. We're going to sit there for a little while. I did. I breathed and so on. And then we came back down and I'm going to feel better. And the fourth phase of my methodology, as you very well know, is calm. And so um, everything calmed and settled and so on. And that's how I do it. I ask myself these questions. How will I feel in one hour if I did this? Regarding very, very difficult things, people in addictive use, addictive yes. behavior, people who have 100 pounds to lose, people who are um, caregiving, uh, they're very ill, elderly parent, and still parenting younger children. Now we need to come into smaller, uh, very, very small blocks. You know, what can I do? I, I suddenly have five minutes, everybody's asleep. What can I do now? And, yeah. you know, we can breathe and we can move our body a little bit in that case. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. That is so beautiful. And you've explained it so beautifully. And I know some people will be listening and watching and actually going, oh, I still can't do it. Remember, you have the tools. Susan's books are there. The podcasts are there. Working with Susan personally, an intuitive business system or personally to help in life in general, in any shape or form. It can be applied to anything, can't it? So definitely get on board with what Susan is offering here. There is so much that you're offering everybody because you're absolutely right. You live it, breathe it. You do it all the time. And everyone else can too, can't they? So thank you so much for helping us all understand your beautiful books a little bit more. And thank you for sharing them all with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nadine. This is so good. I already can't wait to do more conversations. Uh, we may do a deeper dive into these. Uh, I have another book yes. in Soul Alignment. Yes. And Nadine, please just let us know where we can find you as well. The best place to find me is on my YouTube channel because all of our conversations are on there for a start, and there's many. Um, Karma Self, just look that up, Karma Self, it's C-A-L-M-E-R, Karma Self, on YouTube. That's where I am. This podcast, this conversation is going on there, um, as many others are, and Perhaps you could tell everyone where people can find you as well. Where's the best place to dip into you? Yes. So okay. I have my YouTube channel as well, The Confidence Zone with Susan Axelrod. My website is whatwillyourlegacybe.com. Yeah. And I invite people, please look up our videos, look up the YouTube channels, put them on while you're walking and have fun with that. Thank you so much, Nadine. Thank you. Thank you.